So it's been a minute since we've done a how-to video. And all of you saw me doing this project last week in little fits and starts on Instagram and said, teach me. Well, I am here, Yoda is here to show you the way. <laughs> so today, we're going to talk about how to repair your antique gesso frames. Uh, you see these all the time, you see these beautiful frames that we just don't have anymore in the 20th century because no one's doing this kind of artwork for frames. And, but they're missing big chunks, they're missing chunks and pieces, and so you pass on the mirror or you pass on the piece of artwork because you think, well, the frame looks terrible, there's nothing I can do about that, and I don't wanna put that up today to show you how to recover your beautiful frame. Now, I'm gonna preface this by saying, this is how I do it. This is how I was taught to do it by someone who does this for a living. I know that there are other ways and other materials that people often use to do this process. This is my preferred way. If you have a different preferred way, Good for you. You just keep on keeping on doing it that way. But this is how I do it, and I'm gonna walk you through the reasons why I like this process a little bit better than some of the older, uh, more standard processes that are used to repair this gesso frame. So first we're gonna go through the materials that you need to do this project. Here are the materials that you need. First thing, you need liquid latex. This stuff smells like gasoline, sulfur, and the seventh level of hell combined. It's very stinky. So when you open it and use it, make sure you're using it in a well-ventilated space or you have a fan going, don't breathe it in directly. It also is a little bit um, caustic on your skin if you get it on your skin. Not terribly, but you will feel later like, oh, a little, mm, ow, tingle, tingle. So be very cautious when you're using it. You're also gonna need air dry clay. This is way more than I will ever use for this project. You need some really inexpensive craft brushes. Craft brushes. Some glue. Now, I prefer school glue, but this is what I had on hand, so this is what I'm going to use today. I often use my dental tools, which have never been used in anyone's mouth because I use them for crafting. But you don't have to have a dental tool because these wooden skewers that you could buy a package of for like 50 cents are excellent to do these projects with. They don't stick to the product at all. You can really manipulate your product with them. Um, and then for this project, you're not gonna need this for all projects, but for this project, I also need a piece of paper, a pencil, an exacto knife, and some scissors. I am 100% a professional with this. So let's get started on our project, okay? So let's say that your beautiful mirror is missing a strawberry. Oh no, this pattern is strawberries and flowers, and yet there are strawberries missing. Whatever shall we do? Let me show you. Step number one. Open up your stink fest liquid latex. So one thing I do want to point out, the liquid latex will discolor your paint. So I've applied liquid latex here and removed the mold. I didn't get too precious about this mirror and this paint because as you can see in these areas where the 3D relief is missing, someone's already repainted this several times. If you're super precious about the paint and you don't want to repaint it because you're gonna get some discoloration, there is another way that you can do this process that I will go over here in just a second after we finish this explanation. But for right now, we're going to assume that any frame of this age has been repainted a number of times. We're gonna to need to repaint it again to get all of our repairs to match. So that's how we're going to proceed. So let's talk about your first step, your liquid latex or fire from the pits of hell, as I like to call it. You're gonna take your liquid latex and your craft brush and you're going to get a very, very minimal amount on your brush. Do you see how little I have on there? And you're going to brush it very finely over your detail that you want to recreate. It looks like you're putting, you're not even hardly putting any on there. Now, I do want to make sure that you know that you need to get outside of the detail. 
so that you create a good lip and cover it thoroughly. This first coat's really important because that's gonna have all your details. Super thorough coverage. The way that this works is that you have to continue this process until you get a thick latex mold. So what that requires is about a dozen to 14 layers of this latex. However, it has to dry between the coats. This first coat's gonna dry really, really quickly. Your second coat's gonna dry pretty quickly, but the further along you get in your buildup process for your molds, this process, the drying process is gonna take longer. So by the time you get to about layer four, you're gonna need to give it 12 to 24 hours drying time between coats. But so you just keep coating and coating and coating and coating until you end up with something that's gonna look a lot like this like a blobfish at the bottom of the ocean. When it's dry, you'll be able to peel it up and it'll pop off and you'll have the reverse of the item you're wishing to replace. So the elements that needed to be recreated on this frame are the leaf, which this is where I cast the leaf mold. <laughs> leaf mold, are you allergic? <laughs> I'm so funny. Uh, we have strawberries that need to be replicated. So here are the strawberries that I replicated and there they are in the mold. I did another group of strawberries because the strawberries are at different angles throughout the frame. Here you see they're going this direction, uh, down here they're turned in a different way. So I cast several of those. Here's another leaf because leaves are different sizes throughout. We have different different sizes, different shapes. So you wanna make sure that you create all of the reliefs for all the different elements that you have. I didn't do a flower because I haven't found anywhere on here that a flower is missing, but it doesn't mean there isn't one. It just means I haven't found it. I probably will find it while we're, <laughs> while we're doing this video. So now I'm gonna show you how to create your replacement piece. So this is the one I'm gonna do because this is gonna be the most difficult piece to replace on here. You can see I've already done some of the leaf and ball elements on here. I just need to glue those down. I'm gonna do that with my craft glue here in a little bit. But I'm gonna do the leaf that is missing right here. But you can see there's part of the original is still existing. So what are we gonna do about that? That is where our paper comes in. So I'm gonna take my paper and I'm just gonna trace, I'm gonna rub. all here to get good outline. See where it's coming in really dark? I did a rubbing and this dark line is the actual leaf that's there. So I'm gonna cut that out. So when I lay this on here, you should be able to tell, see how that fits right there very neatly. This section fits. So we're gonna take our air dry clay. I think this is the one that's the right shape too. Yes, so we're gonna take our air dry clay. I'm gonna get down here where it's good and wet. You have to keep this out of the air. If it gets exposed to air, it starts drying almost immediately. So we give it a little strainer cap. Also, I forgot to mention brown. You guys know that brown is always, it's always a craft supply. We have to have brown no matter what we're doing. And we're gonna take our craft clay and we're gonna press it firmly into our mold. And you're gonna see why I prefer the craft clay method as opposed to the plaster of Paris method here in just a second. Once you pull your mold, there's your leaf. Ta-da! Can you see that? Mm -hmm. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna place our pattern. Can you guys hear my puppy dogs playing with their squeaky toys in there? <laughs> It's like living with toddlers, only we can leave them alone when we go to the restaurant. And you're gonna cut away the part that is extant. A little bit, but not all of the excess here. And a tiny bit across the top, but again, I'm gonna leave a little bit of excess all around the sides. You're about to see why.
So you're about to see why I like the clay. First of all, you can manipulate the size of your casting once it's on the piece. So if I want it a little softer, I can carve that down. If I want those leaves to be a little bit less, I can change the way they're shaped and I can blend pretty seamlessly into the existing piece. There's my wood stick. Crafting with Lane is all about where are my tools. So I can actually blend that in so that the marriage of those two images, once we get it painted, is gonna look really, really seamless. I can go in and carve in those little lines then here, I can press down and pull out. Which is gonna help adhere to the piece. And then I can come in with my stick that detail, that relief detail, even higher. You just have a lot more manipulation of the shape and the piece with the air dry clay once you've cast. have to take a second to tell you about the Addison Bed and Breakfast in Fernandina Beach, Florida. You know we owned a home there, Fern, and we absolutely love the area. We went back for a visit a couple months ago and stayed at the Addison. The innkeepers, Lisa and Ron West, are amazing. They took such good care of us and such good care of all of their guests. Looking for an amazing destination for a getaway weekend? Go to AddisonOnAmelia.com. I guarantee you'll love it. So now we have our leaf that's been gone for who knows how many decades. Leaf's back. We're gonna wait for it to dry. You saw, that's the reason I like to use the clay because you can work it into, you can blend it into the design. You're not just making your strawberry and sticking it on there. You're not just making your leaf and sticking it on there. You're actually working it and molding it into the design. So you get the relief, you get the same pattern, but it's not an obvious, obvious repair by the time it's done. But now we're gonna talk about placing our repair pieces. So this piece goes right here. I fit it last week, uh, but as it's clay, it doesn't adhere by itself. So we're gonna do just a little craft glue. A little dog will do ya. And we're gonna place that right back in its spot that it was molded to fit. 
apply very light pressure. And that's gonna dry really nicely and stick beautifully. We hope for the next hundred years or so. So that is the mold making, the relief creating, and the placing process of this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up because I have a lot of work to do on it. And then I'm gonna show you painting and what it looks like finished because you, you can't recreate this look of this paint with just one quick coat of paint over the top. So we'll do that uh, next week once I get the frame finished. Bye guys, let me know if you have any questions.